the planet Turalis lay in the grip of a bitter conflict that had lasted generations. It was a world where the Thalarans, with their shimmering scales and formidable technology, clashed endlessly with humans, each side deeply entrenched in their belief that the other was a threat to their very existence. Amidst this turmoil, two souls from opposing sides were about to find themselves on an unexpected path. Kale Ryder stood at the edge of the Thaloran encampment, his iridescent scales reflecting the setting sun in a dazzling array of colours. The Thaloran warrior had just returned from another skirmish at the border. Victory had been theirs, but it brought him no joy. As he gazed across the contested land, his mind wandered to the forbidden territory of human culture, a curiosity that had been growing stronger with each encounter. On the other side, Emma Carter meticulously recorded her latest findings in her laboratory within the human settlement. As a xenobiologist, her work centred on understanding Thaloran physiology and culture, seeking ways to bridge the gap between their species. Despite the dangers, she believed in the possibility of peace. Her thoughts often drifted to the mysterious warrior she had glimpsed during the last ceasefire, a Thaloran with the eyes that seemed to question everything, much like her own. Their fates were about to intertwine. During a clandestine reconnaissance mission, Kale found himself separated from his unit, wandering deeper into human territory than he had ever dared before. Injured and disoriented, he stumbled into an abandoned structure, only to collapse from his wounds. Emma, drawn by an inexplicable feeling, ventured outside the safety of her lab. She'd heard rumours of a Thaloran presence nearby and felt compelled to investigate. Her heart pounded as she entered the dilapidated building and found Kale unconscious on the floor. Without hesitation, she had knelt beside him, her training taking over as she began to treat his injuries. Hours passed before Kale regained consciousness. His eyes flickered open and he tensed, recognising the human tending to him. But as their eyes met, something shifted. The hostility he had always felt towards her kind was absent, replaced by a profound sense of gratitude and curiosity. You're helping me? he asked, his voice weak but filled with disbelief. Emma nodded, her expression one of gentle determination. Yes, we're not all enemies, Kale. His name on her lips sounded foreign and beautiful. How do you know my name? he managed, confusion etched across his face. I've been studying your people, Emma admitted. I believe there's more to us than just this war. If we could only understand each other. Kale's heart pounded, not from fear, but from something he couldn't yet name. You're risking your life by helping me. And you risked yours coming here, Emma replied softly. Maybe we both want something more than this endless conflict. As days passed, Emma nursed Kale back to health. And in that time, they shared stories of their worlds, their hopes, and their fears. They discovered common ground in their desire for peace, a bond that grew stronger with each passing day. But the world outside was relentless. Thaloran patrols were closing in, and Captain Marcus Haynes had received intelligence of a Thaloran presence near their settlement. The tension mounted as both sides prepared for another confrontation, unaware of the fragile connection blossoming in the shadows. Kale knew he couldn't stay hidden forever. I must return to my people, he told Emma one night, his voice filled with regret. If they find me here, it will mean death for both of us. Emma's eyes filled with tears she refused to let fall. I know, but promise me, Kale, that you won't give up on what we found here. I promise, he said, his hand gently touching her cheek. And perhaps, one day, our people will see what we see. With a final, lingering glance, Kale slipped away into the night, back to his world of conflict. Emma watched him go, her heart heavy but filled with a newfound determination. She would continue her work, now more than ever, fueled by the hope that their secret bond could one day bring an end to the hostilities. The dawn of a new chapter was on the horizon, written in the stars and the hearts of those brave enough to defy the odds. Days turned into weeks and the memory of Kale's touch lingered with Emma. She immersed herself in her research, finding solace in the hope 
that her work could pave the way for peace. The data she had collected on Thal'oran biology and culture became the cornerstone of her proposals for negotiation. But scepticism remained strong among her colleagues and superiors. Meanwhile, Kale returned to the Thal'oran encampment, bearing the weight of his secret. His unexpected absence had raised questions, but his reputation as a warrior shielded him from immediate suspicion. Still, the experience had changed him and he found himself increasingly at odds with the prevailing sentiments of his people. One evening, as he sat alone in his quarters, the door slid open to reveal Leara Voss, the wise elder of his tribe. Her eyes, sharp and knowing, bore into his. Kale, you have been distant since your return, she said, her voice gentle but firm. What troubles you? Kale hesitated, then spoke. I met a human. She saved my life. We talked, and I began to see that they are not all our enemies. Liara's expression softened, a hint of a smile playing on her lips. The path to understanding is fraught with peril, my young warrior, but it is a path worth treading. Kale was taken aback. You don't oppose this. I have lived long enough to see the futility of endless war, Liara replied. If you have found a kindred spirit among the humans, then perhaps there is hope yet. In the human settlement, Captain Marcus Haynes grew increasingly wary of Emma's frequent excursions and her impassioned pleas for a peaceful resolution. He respected her intelligence, but feared that her idealism might lead to disaster. Emma, he said during one of their heated discussions, you're risking everything. The Thalarans can't be trusted. If they find out about your research, it could endanger us all. I'm not naive, Marcus. Emma countered. But I've seen another side to them. We have to try to find common ground, or this cycle of violence will never end. Their debate was interrupted by an urgent transmission. A Thaleran scouting party had been spotted near the border. Orders were to engage immediately. Emma's heart sank as she realised Kale might be among them. She made a desperate decision. Under the cover of night, she slipped out of the settlement and headed towards the border hoping to find Kale and prevent a bloodbath. Unbeknownst to her, Captain Haynes, suspicious of her intentions, followed at a distance. Kale, leading a small reconnaissance unit, had also sensed the growing tension. He knew that any encounter could escalate into full-blown conflict. As they neared the border, his keen eyes spotted a familiar figure moving stealthily through the terrain. Emma, he whispered, astonished. Signalling his unit to hold position, he approached her. Kale, you have to stop this, Emma urged, her voice low but urgent. Both sides are preparing for a fight. We need to find a way to communicate. Before Kale could respond, Captain Haynes emerged from the shadows, his weapon drawn. Step away from her, Thaloran. Emma stepped between them, her hands raised. Marcus, please, lower your weapon. He's not our enemy. You don't understand, Haynes snapped. He's a threat. Kale's soldiers, sensing danger, moved in closer. Weapons at the ready. The tension was palpable. A single misstep from igniting a deadly skirmish. Liara Voss, who had secretly followed Kale, now stepped forward, her presence commanding immediate respect. Enough, she declared in a voice that brooked no argument. We cannot continue like this. Liara's appearance and her words had a profound effect. Both sides hesitated. Caught off guard by the sudden call for peace from an elder, she spoke of the potential for understanding and the necessity of a dialogue. Emma and Kale added their voices, sharing their experiences and the bond they had formed. Captain Haynes, though still wary, saw the sincerity in their pleas. Slowly, he lowered his weapon signalling a ceasefire to his men. The Thaleran soldiers followed suit, deferring to Liara's authority. An uneasy truce was established. Emma and Kale, supported by Liara, proposed a meeting between representatives of both sides to explore the possibility of a lasting peace. Captain Haynes agreed to relay this proposal to his superiors, albeit with reservations. The first meeting was tense, filled with mistrust and the weight of centuries of conflict. But the presence of Emma, Kale, and Liara brought a glimmer of hope. 
They shared their vision of a future where Thalarans and humans could coexist, highlighting the mutual benefits of collaboration over conflict. Despite the initial resistance, the seed of change had been planted. Over time, as more meetings were held and tentative agreements were reached, a fragile but growing alliance began to take shape. Emma and Kale's relationship became a symbol of what could be achieved when courage and compassion transcended the barriers of enmity. Their bond, forged in the midst of war, held the promise of a brighter future for both their peoples, and so, on the once blood-stained fields of Turalis, the first rays of a new dawn began to shine, heralding an era of hope and reconciliation. The uneasy truce between the Thalarans and humans began to show signs of potential as both sides continued to meet and discuss terms. Emma and Kale, along with Liara and Captain Haynes, became key figures in these negotiations, advocating tirelessly for understanding and cooperation. The initial meetings were fraught with tension. The deep-seated mistrust between the two races often led to heated arguments, with old grievances resurfacing time and again. However, Emma's detailed research on Thaloran physiology and culture provided invaluable insights, helping to dispel some of the misconceptions held by humans. Similarly, Kale shared human customs and technologies with his people, fostering a sense of curiosity and respect. As news of the peace talks spread, both humans and Thalarans began to show support. There were those who opposed the idea, clinging to the familiar hatred that had fueled the conflict for so long, but there were also many who had grown weary of the constant warfare. Families who had lost loved ones, traders who saw the potential for new markets, and young individuals dreaming of a future free from the shadows of war, all began to hope. In the human settlement, Emma faced scepticism from some of her colleagues and superiors. She continued her work, organising seminars and discussions to educate others about Thaloran culture. Her dedication and passion began to win over even the most sceptical minds. On the Thaloran side, Kale faced similar challenges. Many of his fellow warriors viewed his interactions with humans as a betrayal. However, his bravery and the respect he had earned on the battlefield lent weight to his words. He spoke of honour and the possibility of a greater victory, a peace that would benefit all Thalarans. The turning point came when a Thalaran child fell gravely ill with a rare disease that had no known cure among their people. Emma, drawing on her extensive knowledge of xenobiology, identified a potential treatment using human medical techniques. Despite the risks, she volunteered to administer the treatment personally. Captain Haynes, initially reluctant, agreed to accompany her, understanding the symbolic importance of the gesture. Together they travelled to the Thaloran encampment, where Liara and Kale awaited them. The atmosphere was tense, but the Thalorans allowed Emma to proceed. Emma worked tirelessly, her hands steady and her mind focused. The treatment was a success, and the child recovered. This act of compassion and cooperation resonated deeply with both sides, it became a powerful symbol of what could be achieved when old enmities were set aside. With the success of the child's treatment, the momentum for peace grew stronger. More joint projects were initiated, ranging from agricultural exchanges to technological collaborations. Schools and cultural centres were established to promote mutual understanding and respect. Emma and Kale's relationship, once a secret and forbidden bond, now became a celebrated emblem of the new alliance. They continued to work together, navigating the complex and often perilous path towards lasting peace. Their love story, against all odds, inspired many to believe in the possibility of reconciliation. Despite the progress, challenges remained. Extremist factions on both sides attempted to sabotage the peace efforts, launching attacks and spreading propaganda. Emma and Kale faced constant danger, but their resolve never wavered. Liara and Captain Haynes, having formed an unlikely but strong partnership, took on the task of countering these threats. They worked tirelessly to maintain security and to reassure their people that the path to peace, though fraught with difficulties, was the right one. Years passed and the landscape of Turalis began to transform. The scars of war, though still visible, 
were overshadowed by new growth and development. Thalarans and humans, once bitter enemies, now worked side by side, building a shared future. Emma and Kale, having faced countless trials together, became leaders in this new era. Their vision of a united Tyralis inspired future generations, ensuring that the mistakes of the past would not be repeated. As they stood together, looking out over a world that had once known only conflict, they felt a deep sense of fulfillment. Their journey had been long and arduous, but it had led to something beautiful and enduring. The dawn of peace had finally arrived, and with it, the promise of a brighter, united future for all who called Tyralis home.